Well, it's Tuesday. I'll just brand new point on again. Hopefully, don't lose it this time. But change them just in time. Roll pins were starting to give out. And these points, while they still had a little bit going them, because of how tight the land is, it was getting real hard going to pull it through. So I thought, let's get a new point on. Hopefully, she'll pull through more. But in theory, that is more metal contact with the soil. But it's sharper, it's fresher, should cut through better. Or at least that's that's my theory. We'll see how it actually goes. But it shouldn't be too far different. I thought. Should be better at least. But yeah. Put these in the toolbox to be taken out at a later date. And off we go again. the face of somebody who's just walked around the entire field looking for a GoPro that's just fell off of his subsoiler because he thought a magnet mount would be man enough. And to be fair, for the past year I've had it, the magnet mount has been fine. But just watching the footage, obviously it's just started to wiggle loose and then gone. Thank you Mr. Radio. So I think I need to jump onto eBay or Amazon and get some actual um, stick-on mounts. Because it's not like I don't use this equipment nearly every day, you know, tractors, subsoilers. I think I just need to get a bulk load. And whenever I film something, I should just stick one of those on permanently, because they stick on well. I put one on last year on the Marshall, and it's still there. So uh, clearly the sticky pads are the way forward. So I'm, I'm not gonna do a bulk order before I have for heart failure. <laughs> Because finding this without damage, still in one piece, and still recording with battery left, is a little bit lucky. So, whoo! Let's order some of them. I've got some sticky pads ordered so I never lose the GoPro again. Anyway, so we're now at East Rinch again and oh my god we need some topping. So we're back on the combo. Got the subsoiler on the back again. So uh Thank you. 
Well, that wasn't a very interesting day for you lot. You know, you've seen me do that a few times now. But I really enjoyed it. Um, not really a lot to say either. Tomorrow, well, Wednesday's video, start filming tomorrow, um, is basically just me on the cart, cutting the tulips back, because John Boy's got a day off. So, uh, that's the wrong knob, that's the right knob. Right, I need to put you down. There we go. Right. Will you behave? There we go. Front box is in the right position now. Rear links are up, everything's up, and we're going home. It's now five o'clock, and yeah. So today's not been very interesting for you guys. You've seen me time-lapse subsoiling between the rows before, as well as the um, topper. Uh, obviously a little bit out of practice. It's been a couple of weeks since we've used the topper because uh, that was a little bit rough getting that going and started in line again. But uh, never mind, we're getting there. So uh, I've had a good couple of hours now, so. I don't think tomorrow we're going to get moved here. I think it's going to be Thursday at the earliest before we're back here at East Winch because currently we're at the show field finishing that off. Show field's completely busted. That's all good. That's sorted. I ain't got to go back there with the subsoiler or the topper. Didn't need the topper to begin with because it's fairly clean. And um, yeah, there's not really a lot to say. But the dry conditions still have not improved there's been a couple of light showers i've seen now and again but i don't think it's actually making a difference on any of the soils so we're just gonna have to keep muddling through as we are the yields are looking somewhat good so i've been told some have gone absolutely fantastic some have gone mediocre so more of the natures of farming really so uh yeah not really anything else to report uh, apart from yesterday, I didn't bother filming it because it was a bit long-winded. I started doing the wiring. I started doing the wiring on the thing in the workshop, and I'm going to give the grand reveal now. That is our originally lily harvester, hence the name Belmont Lil. So, uh, yeah, wiring started on that. She's now being used for asters, and not a lot else. Not a lot else um, allows, a, not a lot of our flowers allow for that style of harvester, mainly because of um, row planting, and also even if you plant a set, like Gladioli, for example, if you plant one bulb next to another, one might grow first just the way it is so if you do a blanket harvest which is what the lil does uh hopefully maybe friday's video that will be a, a video on um you know finishing off lil getting her back ready for work and we can sort of talk about well probably talk with dad why he built it what was the ideas what were the aims sort of go through it like that so I'm about to hit the road, so uh, make sure you like and subscribe and follow us on Instagram and Facebook to stay updated with all of our goings on, our shenanigans, and uh, this, this is what we do, we're Norfolk farmers, grow flowers, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, brief update on the barley, uh, yikes, that is going to need combining sooner than I thought. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm worried that I need to uh, get sorted with that. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.